this is Miss Cindy, and I'm back to try something different today. Um, I'm going to do an acrylic pour on a piece of wood. I've done this once before, but I didn't put any Floetro on it. Um, it actually came out pretty good. The only difference was once it dried, I could see the wood grains. So I'm going to try it again with the Floetro as a base and see if it uh, dries with the actual pour and not a base in the background. So I went ahead and I got it on the bottom. I got it around the sides. Uh, we're going to see what happens. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I've seen this done twice and both times I saw it done, they didn't put anything on the wood and it does work. I just didn't like the, the grain showing. So let's see what happens. I'm just using uh, like earth tone colors because I'm hoping this comes out in a way that it will, I can resin it and it be an actual tabletop. Also the first time I did this, I did it on my Lazy Susan, but I'm just going to let it flow today and I'm going to tilt it and let's see what happens. I know it's running out pretty fast, so I may get it. Here's the pattern. I don't intend on keeping this, but those are the colors.
And we've got just a small spot over there. Oh, if I could just get that covered, I would be very, very pleased with this. And I think I just got it covered, if I can bring it back. Yeah, I want that right in the center. And I still have that small spot. Oh, gosh. That's a little white. And I don't want to dip that. I need that to run off. Okay, now I got to bring it back. Oh. Ah, oh, not too bad. Oh my gosh, I love the colors. The colors are gorgeous. Okay, so I'm always trying something new, so I'm going to try something here. Since this is going to be a tabletop, um, it'd be cool if I could get some coasters that match it. I know I'm not going to get... Uh, the exact same design because I haven't been able to do that on anything else. But anyway, I had some of these coasters. I think I got them for like a buck at uh, Walmart. And I mixed the colors as close as possible. I went ahead, put a little Floetro on the base of it. And I'm just going to see if I can get some coasters to try to um, match the top. And what I was going to do with this is see if I can get it as close to the, that's, uh, hole in the middle we're going to see if this works my concern is I may not have enough paint And I don't even care how it mixes as long as they're the same color. Nope, and I probably will only get three coasters. But I really think this would be a, a nice uh, coaster because it dries. Yeah, it's a little bit too dark. But it sure tilts in here a whole lot easier <laughs> than on that thing. Yeah, even if they don't match, they're the same color, so. I already know they're not going to match. I haven't been very successful of getting the same uh, pattern twice. Even when you do it at the same time, you don't get the same pattern twice. But they all have the same color, so I think it would be a nice little set. You notice how I didn't even wash off the bottom. I'm just putting them in there.
Boy, I could tilt these all day. I'm trying to get at least a swirl on all of them. Wow, this is pretty cool. And then we're just going to let these dry. Yep, four different ones, four different patterns, but they still have the same um, color as the table. So we're going to see what happens. If this dry really good, then maybe I could put some resin on that or shellac and let it cure, and then you actually be able to put a glass on it. So I'll be back. Okay, so... While my tabletop is drying, that's going to take a few days to dry before I do anything else to it. I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the table legs ready. Uh, so all I did was I got, um, these were like a 48 inch round, uh, 2 inch uh, rounded wood that I'm going to use for the legs. I had Home Depot cut them to 24 inches. So I'm just going to stain them. I'm going to use the Varathane Golden Oak. Um, yeah, there. Yeah, I'm going to use the golden oak and I have my brush and I have uh, my glove and I have my rag to wipe them down. So all I'm going to do is just stain these. Um, I'm going to get a little sandpaper, sand them down just a little bit. And then I'm going to sand these and let these dry. And then the legs will be pretty much done to go on the table. On the ends, I will probably put some felt, glue some felt on them so to be soft on the wood surface. Uh, but that's about it. So I'll be back. Okay, so here's the last one. Um, that I'm staining. Just to give you an idea of the color. It's a real light uh, oak, which is perfect for that table because the table's pretty light. But I'm just going ahead and putting it on uh, very light. I'm not too sure if I'm going to do two coats or not. We'll see after it dries really good. Boy, it's amazing how when you put stain on the the grain and the wood just shows. Okay, and then I just come back with my rag and wipe it down really good. Okay, so see, there's my last leg. I don't know if you can see it really good, but this is the color it's going to be on the bottom of that tabletop. I may leave it the way it is. I don't think I'm going to do a second coat because I wanted, I really wanted a light wood. So when it's time to move on, I'll be back. Okay, here's a close-up of it. Um, I like this one a lot better. Putting that flow troll on the uh, wood first. Not only did it run really nice with the tilt, uh, but I don't think when this dries, I'm going to see the grains of the wood like I did the first time I did it. So I love the, the pattern. These are all of the colors in the living room. So I'm going to let this dry because I plan on making this a tabletop. I'll be back when I start doing the rest of it. So here are my coasters that I uh, let dry and I put some resin on them 
just to see how it would work. These coasters are plastic, so I couldn't use the blowtorch to dry the resin. Instead, I had to use an air gun. It didn't get all of the bubbles out, but um, it seemed to have worked. Uh, when I do the top of the table, I'll make sure I use a blowtorch or a blow gun. I would definitely not use, you know, the blow dryer. But because these were plastic, I was afraid to uh, put the blowtorch to them. But they're heavy, and they came out all right. So now I just got to finish the table. Okay, so it's time to resin. I'm going to use the art resin. It comes with the resin and the hardener. It's uh, one part each equal one part each to make sure it does um, harden correctly. I've already put that in my cup and I've been mixing it for uh, three minutes. So right now uh, I've got it on a level surface. I'm just going to pour it on. I'm going to use the scraper to even it out. And then I'm going to use, actually this kit came with a blowtorch. So if I have any bubbles on the top, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to have, I'm going to have to use this to get the bubbles out. So that's about all we're going to do right now, and I'll be back uh, when we get the resin on. You can see it does have a lot of bubbles in it. Now they say to put this, if it's leaning that way, I got a feeling that this is not quite level. Okay. That makes a difference too. It needs to be level.
Okay, so now I'm going to get my heat gun, the blowtorch, and try to get some of these bubbles up out. Here, I'll give you a close shot of the bubbles. Okay, so we're going to take the torch and try to get some of these bubbles out. So this is the little contraption that I've made uh, to keep this thing covered. After you put the resin on and for it to dry to make sure you don't get dust and everything in it, um, I didn't have a box big enough that I could put over it. So I just used some of my bed risers that I use for artwork and I put a, a cover over it so that no dust could get in it. Now, this has been drying for, just dried for one day. Um, I'm just inspecting to see if I still have some air bubbles in it. That blowtorch wasn't so easy either. That's the first time I did it. But I think I have a few in here, but for the first time, it's not too bad. At least I know what I have to do uh, next time. So we're gonna let this dry for another couple of days before I tackle it, because in order to put the legs on, I'm gonna have to turn it upside down. So just wanted to give you a quick view of what it looks like with the resin on. Okay, so the resin has dried on the top. It's been like three days. Um, and what I did was the bottom, I just painted black, a flat black. And then I measured um, the four legs. And I didn't put nails in it this time. Uh, this time I just used the uh, Gorilla Glue. If I do this table again, and I'll probably nail it in, but this is a really good heavy duty glue. It does foam, so I may have to sand around the edges because I can see it foaming now. But other than that, um, the only thing I think I have to do to this is there, it was cut pretty close, but nothing is precise. So I may have to get my sander and just sand down the top before I put anything, any coating on this for when it sits on the floor. So for the most part, this is almost done. Okay, I'm finally finished with my uh, acrylic pour tabletop. Uh, there it is. It's complete. Sits right in that little corner there. Uh, here's the top of it. Uh, there's my pattern along with my little coasters sitting there. And there are my legs. That's one thing I wasn't happy with was the legs. As pretty as the top is, I think the legs could have been a little bit fancier. But this is the first time out working with uh, making furniture using this uh, acrylic pour and resin. So for the first time out, it came out pretty good. But I will be doing this again. Have a great day.